I checked those last few remaining tubes in the amp and horizontal output, they all test fine. But something occurred to me. That horizontal output tube might be driven a little bit too hard, which is why I've got excessive width. Or perhaps the tube uh, has some odd characteristics. Now, I tested it on my tube tester and it tested okay, but I just swapped it out anyways just to see what difference it would make. I looked up uh, the service info on the set and they, could, they had two possible causes, well three possible causes for excessive width. One, the width control is set to be too wide. But uh, that's a variable inductor and it doesn't have that much impact on the width. This mine's like 20% too wide, so I'll leave that for the last possibility. Uh, and one, as I mentioned, the horizontal output tube might be uh, have some uh, issues. But the third one is that the high voltage might be a little low. If the high voltage is too low, the sweep will carry the signal or the electron beam right off to the edges because there's not as much potential pulling it straight forward. So in other words, the less high voltage you have accelerating that beam towards the screen, the easier it is to deflect it left, right, up, down. So anyways, Let's see if this other output tube makes any difference. Because something else I've noticed is that the brightness isn't so hot. When I first powered to set up, the CRT seemed really bright. Lately, I've had this brightness control up almost all the way. So I wonder if the high voltage might have dropped a bit. I hope this, the CRT isn't wearing out. That would really stink. All right, so here we are back. And again, it's not that bright. So that's brightness up all the way. Which is, it's okay. I mean, it's watchable. Probably looks better on the camera than it does to me in person, but uh, for a CRT that tests like new, I would expect a brighter image. Anyways, let's see if this output tube is blue. Not now. I'll turn it off and back on like before. And we saw it was really blue when I first powered this setup. So I think it was just a quirk of the other two, and they're probably both just fine, and the screen is still too wide, so <laughs> all that didn't solve anything, and still barely have any sound. Alright, so back to the drawing board. Now lack of sound has started to really irritate me, so I think what I'm going to do next is uh, check the few components under here on the audio amp. There aren't that many parts, there's like three or four caps, a few resistors, might as well take care of that. Here's the bottom of that power supply audio amp chassis, so, as I said, not a whole lot here. Uh, all the resistors were, eh, more or less okay, except this one seems rather odd. Should be 470k, I've got 764k. However, check this out. If I switch the ohmmeter leads around, instead of 764, I'm getting 395, let's say. So, half of what I got going the other direction. Now, all I can think about that is I've got a very bizarre resistor that's acting kind of like a diode or semiconductor. Or, it's being affected by something else in the circuit. Now, of course, that's been unplugged for a while. Cap should have discharged by now. But, perhaps, one of these electrolytics here is still holding a little bit of a charge. So I'm going to try disconnecting one end. But I have heard strange tales online about resistors doing very odd things when they start uh, going bad. So uh, let's disconnect one end of this and see what we actually measure. Alright, I clipped one end of the resistor off because I figure I'm going to replace this thing regardless. And let's see what we get going this way. 482, actually, pretty much within tolerance. If I get that going the other way, this resistor probably was okay, and it's just being affected by other odd stuff in the circuit. Yep, there we go. All right. So there's got to be a lingering charge somewhere in here, uh, which I find a little bit surprising because that's been off for a while now, and when th this was hooked up, and there are bleeder resistors in here, and that should have bled off the charge. Well, I guess one thing we. 
do easily enough is, well, let's see if there's a charge on these caps. I want to test these electrolytics while I got this chassis on it too. Yeah, there still is some voltage on this, not much, 2.2 volts. And that's not actually going to this amp, it's going to other parts of the set. But, uh, yeah, same on this side. Of course, these are connected with the a filter choke in between, that's what these two large leads are. This is the main filter cap for the entire set. So one side's going right to the main 5U4 rectifier cap and also to the filter choke, other side of the filter choke goes to the other side of the cap making a Pi filter and then this wire powers most of the set. The other cap over here is what is for the audio amp and low voltage supply for the set. Yeah. yeah, it's dropping. So just the resistance of the meter is bleeding off the charge. This guy's got nothing on it. This one's got a bit too. This does that. Huh. I have not encountered that before where there's that much of a charge left on the caps after the set's been powered off. And it would affect the... Uh, Readings on a resistor elsewhere in the circuit. All right, let's check that main filter cap for leakage. Oh yeah, lowest setting we got leakage. This is a cap rated for 450 volts. Should be able to go all the way up to five with no leakage. Now it is slowing down, which means the leakage is decreasing. I kind of figured this cap couldn't be that leaky, otherwise the set would have horrible issues with hum in the power supply, and the cap will be getting hot, so see it's just about gone out. If we go up, now I've had this set running for hours over the last uh, week or so, so I would have thought if it was possible to form this up, it would have been formed up by now. Highest level of things just lit solid, but you see it is it is forming up even just now as I uh, have this going. So I can get up to three now with no leakage. Still at four, of course at five. Now imagine if I let this run for a while, it uh, will go out eventually. But I also suspect if I turn it off for a while, it's going to be leaking. On the lowest setting again. See, they were off at four. Right, for the heck of it, I'll check the other section too. It's a dual 40 microfarad, 450 volt caps now. Check the other section and see it's plenty weak in the lowest section too. Not really to form up, you, if you really were curious about trying to reform and salvage an old cap, you would let this sit for minutes, hours maybe even, but certainly just not a few seconds like I'm doing. I'm just curious to see uh, how leaky these still are after having had this set run for hours. Sure, it was intermittent and maybe that's the key, maybe if I let these sit on continuously like with this tester, which can be used for reforming, they mention it in the uh, instruction manual. Fill it to sit maybe for half an hour, hour, two hours. Because when I've had this uh, running, it's probably never been on for more than eh, 20 minutes at a stretch. But at any rate, I'll, I'll be replacing these because they will fail before too long, I'm sure. It's just basic chemistry. The electrolyte in these breaks down, and uh, the prime factor in when they break down is heat and, and, uh, and time, of course. I just finished a full recap down here 
of all the old paper caps and I ended up replacing most of the resistors too and uh, I'll leave the original electrolytics in there for the time being but uh, eventually I will replace those as well right now I want to see if this work actually uh, did anything to help the audio situation well it's certainly better but it's still nowhere near as good as I'd like it to be because right now the volume's up all the way but at least I can hear something Alright, so this is just two major things left. One is dealing with the horizontal issue. Not only is the width excessive, you've probably noticed by now there's some vertical banding in here. Could very well both be related to excessive horizontal drive or something along those lines. And then there is the uh, tuner IF stuff. In other words, all this stuff. Which could very, very well be the source of the low audio. Um, oh, and then I mentioned the brightness too, which might also be related to the horizontal issues. So, where to start? Well, I think I'll work on the uh, IF stuff first, because there are only a few paper caps left in this. Most of them are small value ceramic and mica caps that are probably all right. I figured while I'm investigating horizontal issues on this set, I might as well take a look inside the high voltage cage. And that's fairly easy to do on these sets. Once you pull off the back cover, you can just undo three screws and the whole side comes off, allowing you full access. So, um, I've already checked the tubes and cleaned them up. And uh, the flyback looks to be fine and I brushed off and blew off uh, dust on that. What I'm more interested in though is what's under here. So one, I want to clean off this dust because eventually that can build up and start leading to uh, um, arcing or uh, it can start bleeding off some of the high voltage because it finds a path of less resistance. But there are also a couple resistors under there. One of them is a current limiting resistor for the filament on the rectifier tube the other is in series with the high voltage lead. It's sort of a current limiter and uh, forms um, a bit of a filter. And uh, because these are carbon composition resistors and you got thousands of volts across uh, that one resistor in series with this line, they can start developing really weird issues as the high voltage can start kind of forming um, channels through the resistor that have less resistance than what it's supposed to be, which is usually around 470k. So I'm going to check that out and uh, clean this guy up too. Um, luckily it, it, it's good because these can be uh, a little tricky to track down. It's a massive resistor. Uh, that reminds me, there is one potential thing that I could do for width. But, uh, I haven't messed around with, but I do recall these sets have it, and that is there are three taps on that resistor. And the idea being that you can position this lead in the you know one of these three lugs that gives you the best performance. I, gotta, I looked it up in the service info. I'm not sure if that controls the width, or the high voltage, or linearity, or what exactly that's for, but I know that's why they give you multiple taps. All right, so to get under here, uh, I'll uh, undo these four screws. By the way, I did discharge the CRT before I started poking around under here. So, take this guy out. Undo those four screws. And clean up the top of this and underneath. Oh, and uh, notice how the connection here is a nice big blob of solder. That's intentional. 
to avoid having any arcing or corona, you want to you want to avoid any sharp points. So if you ever have to repair something like this or this stuff underneath, make big solder blobs. Normally you don't want to do that. You want to make nice clean joints. In this case, you do want to make big old blobs of solder. And this thing under here is a corona ring. What's that? It's for it's a piece of metal just kind of wraps around the two pins and it's attached, I believe, to the high voltage. And the idea is to keep this whole area at an equal, equal potential um, to avoid any, uh, or reduce the chances of any arcing. So it's actually attached to one side of this resistor and one of the two pins. So this whole thing is at the same potential, so uh, it avoids um, having anything for it to arc to. And as you can see, that high voltage really attracts the dust. These are actually really nice white ceramic posts here, or porcelain. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of uh, some 409, some paper towels, and get that nice and cleaned up. Once I got down in there and cleaned off the dirt, I can see it's actually supposed to be a one mega resistor down in there. But what do we have? Over 1.7. In other words, 70% too high. So I don't doubt that that is restricting the high voltage of the picture tube, so I will certainly replace that, and hopefully it will make a brighter, sharper picture. Well, unfortunately, that work inside the high voltage cage accomplished nothing. Still have excessive width. I also tried adjusting the width coil, which had minimal effect, which is what I expected because it's really there for making very fine adjustments, not drastically altering the width. Remember, I want to shrink it by several inches. Uh, I consulted the service info once again. They said if you have excessive width, try swapping out the horizontal output tube, which I've done, and check the components that I've already checked. So, uh, <laughs> I'll keep scratching my head on that one. And uh, something else, I've been saying that I don't, like, I lost volume or the volume is really bad. Well, it's true when I use the converter box. It's about as good as I can get. However, if I go back to over the air channel 6. I actually do have decent volume there. So I think that that really is an alignment issue, so I'm not going to worry about that for now. So uh, what I'm going to do is now is just replace the last few paper caps that I'm sure are leaky just like all the others have been and see what effect that has. There's not many. we got three here. That's in the video output area. We've got one little guy up in here. That's on the sound circuit, so that may have some impact. This guy's actually disconnected. I just left it in there because it's got a metal bracket. It's kind of hard to get it out when the replacement's right below it. And there's one down in here I'll replace. And then there's this, which, by the way, I was wrong about. That's that selenium rectifier and a couple of electrolytics I said that was there to provide DC to the audio tube filaments. No, it's not. It's actually pulling AC from the tube. Uh, audio, one of the, one of the audio tube filaments, I think that's this wire here, it rectifies it to create a slight negative voltage, and that's used for bias in a few other circuits. Um... Oh, there's one paper cap here I had noticed on the volume control, so well, <laughs> could certainly be having some impact on the sound. And uh, then there's a whole lot of resistors still to chuck. So, up in the IF, no paper caps, but there are a whole mess of resistors. And uh, there's a possibility that some of the mica caps might be bad, but uh, actually the video quality is pretty good. So, I don't really want to mess with that stuff too much. Alright, enough with speculating what might be wrong. Time to get out some test equipment. 
So I've pulled out the rider service info, which has a bunch of great oscilloscope waveforms. Tells you where to hook up your scope and what you should see. So right now I am checking this plate of the horizontal discharge tube. And I say it should be 80 volts peak to peak. And the amplitude and shape will vary with the horizontal drive setting. So here's what I see. Now, the horizontal drive setting absolutely has a big effect on it. But if I turn it down as low as it'll go, I've got about uh, 84, 85 volts peak to peak. In other words, higher than what they say it typically is, and I can make it go way higher if I adjust that control, like up to 150 volts. So that's kind of what I was getting at or speculating is that I've got too much drive going to that horizontal output tube. Uh, let's see, let's pull out the schematic. Let's see where that pin 2 actually connects to. So that's this guy right here. Yeah, okay, so that is what gets coupled over to the horizontal output tube. So we've got too much voltage coming through here. Too, too, high, too hot of a signal. And that's what's pushing this too hard which is giving us excessive width, I imagine. So, what could be affecting that? Well, pretty much all this stuff here. And I've already checked these resistors, but I'll double check them again. And uh, I'll get out a VTVM and check some DC voltages in here too. One thing I... I started working my way back in the circuit, and now I'm checking the horizontal oscillator. I use a 6V6 tube for that. Pin 5. Should be 52 volts peak to peak. Well, what have we got? Well, nice looking sine wave, but it's 80 volts peak to peak. So, the problem is not here, it's further back. So, I'll start checking around in here. Um, wouldn't be affected by anything back here, I would think, as this just controls it so it locks onto the incoming signal, if there is one. This is uh, otherwise a free-running oscillator, so if there's no input signal, this stuff is effectively out of the circuit. And, uh, this just runs at its frequency determined by this coil and capacitors there. So, I'll start checking on that stuff. Not much to it. Um, I've replaced these caps and, uh, whew, well, I mean, there's one... 39k resistor and there's a horizontal hold control that seems to work all right and uh, these two resistors here I checked the voltages on the horizontal oscillator and on pins 3 and 4 it's about 30 percent too high well where does that come from well we go through a couple resistors here and down to this bus here which goes over here through focus coil and some power resistors and focus control over to C on the connector which goes to the power supply and to the 5U4 main rectifier. So I've been checking these various power resistors in here and uh, it's tied into not only the focus control and this power resistor here but also these two guys down here. If you recall that was a cruddy old crumbling resistor. Now these did seem to check okay but I knew I was going to be replacing them anyways because uh, they have a pretty high failure rate so uh, the main supply dropping we got this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy basically connected in series on this one here too which I actually previously replaced. So I'm hoping that will have some impact. Well, they all seem to test okay uh, but yeah Maybe uh, an actual operation when they heated up, the values were drifting a little. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so after that I started checking more and more resistors throughout the whole set. And pretty much they're all 10 to 20% high, but no, nothing uh, horribly wrong. No smoking guns. Until I got to this guy. Should be 180k. I got 23k. So that has got to be replaced. Now what is that? You might ask, well, I haven't actually checked yet. Um, let's see if I can find it on here. Uh, it's R145, so 
What is that used for? Okay, here it is. It is part of the sound IF. I think it might be part of uh, an AGC for it. Goes over here, taps into the uh, ratio detector. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what effect it has on the sounds. It's, uh, it's off quite a bit. Replacing those resistors did seem to improve the sound volume a bit and the picture's looking sharper, but still have the same width problem. So I'm hunting around again, working my way back and back and back. Now I'm over at this point looking at the sync circuits and I've noticed throughout from the sync pulse to the vertical oscillator to the input to the horizontal output tube, everything is higher than it should be. But going back here, horizontal pulse out of the integrating network, uh, it's based on the incoming signal. It should be one volt peak to peak. I've got two volts peak to peak. So I think the source of the problem may be much further upstream than I thought, so I'm way over in this point right now, checking this junction here. So everything from here out is wrong. So I'm going to start working my way back upstream and uh, see if I can find out what is going on. Well, I think I finally found the problem and it's not what I expected. So after exhausting everything I could think of underneath the chassis, placed all the caps, checked all the resistors, replaced a lot of resistors, swapped out a lot of tubes, nothing was having any significant impact. Uh, for the width to be that far off, I knew it had to be something major. It couldn't be some subtle little resistor that drifted off value 10 or 20 percent. It had to be something drastic. So I decided to take another look back in here. Even though I know that the scope signal seemed to be too high and that, there just wasn't anything left I could think of to check. So I went back in here. One thing I did is I swapped out the 1B3 rectifier because those can be a little weird to test because of the high voltages and low currents they normally run on. Your tube tester isn't going to be able to simulate that exactly. Okay, that made no difference. Uh, I also checked the width coil hiding down underneath there. Continuity, yeah, it's still good. But I thought, well, what the heck, I might as well try the different taps on this power resistor even though the service intro says it's to adjust horizontal linearity, and my linearity seemed to be fine the way it was. And then I noticed something. I had the set running for maybe 10 minutes, and I turned it off, popped this cover off, and went to swap out this tap, and I touched the side of the resistor. It was a huge 50 watt resistor, so I figured it would be pretty toasty even after the set had been off for a little while, so I just carefully brought my hand near it and noticed something. It's ice cold. I then uh, took an ohmmeter, and oh yeah, it's wide open. So, <laughs> I'm actually surprised the set works with it being open, because uh, there's supposed to be a lot of power going through that thing. So, uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I knew it had to be something pretty significant, so uh, I'll hunt around. It's not exactly the kind of thing I keep in stock, and they're really not made anymore, not with the multiple taps anyways, but... Uh, I can pull one out of another chassis. Well, the one that I had handy from the other Admiral 30A1 I've been poking around with is burned open too, so the hunt continues. Luckily, I just happen to have an entire spare Admiral 30A1 chassis. It came out of a nasty old combo set I scrapped in a basement in Wrigleyville. Uh, so here it is in this guy. Hopefully that one's good. But I'm going to need to find at least another one because that second one that I found that was bad, and they actually do need to use in another set. So uh, I'm guessing this was a fairly common point of failure. Well, this is just sad. After going through all my Admiral sets, I went through my junk box and dug up one more. So I've got seven in total. All seven are bad. Also, somebody online tipped me off that these look a lot like the ones used in the RCA 630TS. And yes, indeed they are. And 
I happen to have one right over here and uh, as memory serves I did test it and it is good in this one so I could borrow it from this set but before I do that I'm just going to pop this in there as is because I was reading online and um, I got, I'm not the first guy to run into this problem and um, some said that uh, they just used the 7500 and it worked okay because it turns out that um, the standard values available are like 5k, 7.5k, and 10k with really nothing much in between. 5k would be definitely too small. And 7.5, well, it's, it's a little larger than what was in the originally, but it's not too far off. So, pop that in there and give it a shot. As far as the adjustable ones go, yeah, there are adjustable 10k at 5k, 10k I'd have to go with because you can adjust it to make it lower. Uh, but they're a little expensive. I think 17 bucks at Mauser, so I'm going to keep searching uh, around and see what I can come up with. Okay, I've got that resistor wired in, so let's see what difference it made. Hmm, definitely had an impact. But, uh, still have too much width. Brightness seems a bit better, though. One thing I can do is um, adjust the drive control. Maybe it has more of an impact now with that resistor being in place. Well, I can stretch it out, but that's as much as it shrinks in. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. I thought that that would finally uh, take care of all the problems, but no. I'm going to turn the set off and reach in there and make, see that it's actually warm, make sure that it's actually working. Yeah, it's not super hot, but it's warm, so there's definitely current flowing through it. Well, um, man, uh... I guess now that that's in circuit, I'm going to flip this back over and take some more voltage checks and uh, see if it had an impact. Now, again, it's it's larger value than it should be by a bit, so I can try uh, putting some resistors in parallel and lowering it down. But, um, yeah, I thought it would have more of an impact. Let's see, it should be, i got 7,500 in there, and it's supposed to be... Either 53, 58, or uh, 6300. So I guess 70, and it was using the 5800 tap. So 75, I guess that is still pretty high. So I shouldn't give up hope yet. Turns out that if you put about 22K in parallel, with 7500 it gets you close to what I'm looking for uh, all I could find on hand was a couple 10k power resistors I put those in series which gives me 20k in parallel with 7500 gives me around 5000 and change and hey what do you know we finally have an image that is not overshooting the sides uh, probably still a little bit wider than I'd like but hey we're getting real close. So 
So now the challenge is going to be finding a reasonably priced source of a, like half a dozen of these <laughs> darn power resistors. Uh, but uh, while I research that, what I'm going to do is pull out this tuner and uh, see about cleaning it out and tweaking it and get it to work right. So I think there are three or four screws on top. You can see one here, one over there, and one there. And I would think only three, maybe four wires underneath. So if I disconnect those wires, stick out these screws, I'll disconnect this antenna, I'll lead the whole thing will just come right out. And then I can really get in there and check it out more closely.